What's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to be taking a look at the LEGO Star Wars 75311 Imperial Armored Marauder. It's ages 8 and up, 478 pieces, and it retails for $40 in the United States, which I think is a pretty good um, price to piece ratio. Now, um, this entire wave is just Clone Wars and Mandalorian sets, and this is, the this is actually the first Mandalorian set I'm reviewing on my channel, so let's take a look. So the first minifigure of the set is the Season 2 version of Grief Karga. I'm really glad we're getting this version in LEGO because I much prefer it over the Season 1 version. And the LEGO Season 1 version wasn't that accurate to begin with. So he's got the full beard now. He's got like the uh, robe. I like how it's kind of like folding over right there. Uh, lots of little tiny little printed details on the shirt which I like. Um, and that print continues under the legs obviously. Uh, he only has one blaster. Uh, I'll have to double check and see if he only carries one in Season 2. Because I know the Season 1 version that came with the Razor Crest had two of them. But yeah. Uh, no double-sided head, unfortunately. But it's whatever. That's not a deal-breaker by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so yeah, he's honestly probably my least favorite minifigure in this set. But I still really like him. Which I think just tells you how strong the minifigs in this set are. Next up, we get two regular Stormtroopers. Uh, now, these are with the 2019 dual-molded helmet, which I have actually not reviewed any sets with. But uh, they did away with the angry clone head, which I'm really happy about because none of them are still clones at this point. So uh, they all have different faces now, which I really like. So, like um, One of them is actually a girl, which is kind of cool. Uh, no double-sided head, obviously, because it's always going to be covered anyway. But uh, the rest of the figure is pretty standard. Uh, I really like the way the helmet has, like, the black lip around the bottom, because that way the uh, neck doesn't show as much, which I always thought was kind of annoying with the LEGO clones and stormtroopers. But yeah, so there's uh, the two stormtroopers. Pretty standard stuff. I'm glad we get two of them, though. This is a pretty good army builder set. Last but not least, we have the Artillery Stormtrooper, it's called on the box, but um, I think most people know him as either the Mortar Trooper or the Mustard Trooper. Um, we actually don't see any of them in the episode that this set is based on. We only see them in Chapter 14, I believe, but uh, I'm definitely glad that we got this dude in LEGO form. It's the same um, markings as the Incinerator Trooper, just in yellow instead of red. Take out the helmet, and uh, we got the uh, this generic uh, head. We've seen this on Bruce Wayne, Loki, so many others. Uh, but uh, again, I'm just glad that they're not using Angry Clone anymore. Uh, the helmet is basically the same as the normal Stormtroopers, just with the extra yellow on it. Uh, if we take off the backpack, we can get a better look at the torso. I'll show the backpack in a second. Uh, he's got a fabric pauldron, which I think is really nice. And uh, on the back, he actually has the backpack printed onto his back, so you don't have to include it if you don't want to. Uh, it's got, the, you know, the extra mortar shells on there. And then you just got the backpack here with the clear black, blech, clear bracket piece. So there we go. Uh, you get an extra one of these um, shells, which isn't technically part of the piece count, but I just gave it to him because I just think it looks cool having him hold it. And then, uh, yeah, again, the backpack is just pretty... It's basically the same as the Sand Trooper backpack, if not the same. Uh, and then uh, for the mortar, it's pretty simple build. I think this is the first time we've gotten a mortar in Lego form. Uh, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, definitely nice to have. I don't like that he can't hold it, but obviously he's not going to be actually holding it when he's using it anyway, so that's okay. Let me throw this dude back together. I don't like when they have figures with both a pauldron and a backpack because then they're a pain in the ass to put back together, but it's whatever. So yeah, there we go. There is the uh, artillery trooper, aka mortar trooper, aka mustard trooper. So yeah, that's it for the minifigs. Let's take a look at the actual set. So this may look a little bit familiar. That's because the armored marauder is basically the same thing as the imperial troop transport that Kenner made back in the day, and then they later included it in Rebels and in the first season of Mandalorian. Uh, the main difference is that right here, where you would have, like, space for stormtroopers, like, standing on the side, you just have extra weapons instead. 
And it would be pretty easy to mod this into the troop transport if you really wanted to, though. Uh, which would be nice because the only version we ever got was a battle pack. Uh, so first off for the features, you got a uh, rotating gun. Just kind of, I like the way that pops out. It's just kind of sticking. It's like kind of less obvious here. And then you can turn it and it'll be like that. You can open this hatch up. And inside you got a uh, crate. It says cargo and then the Imperial emblem. Pop that open and you just got extra ammo for your stud shooters. And it's the exact same on the other side, so I won't even bother showing it. Um, up here, you got a hatch that opens. It leads to nothing. So the idea is that you would just have Grief Karga standing up here, doing his thing, shooting the shit. Uh, but yeah, you can't close it with a minifigure in there, obviously, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, you got another hatch that opens here. Uh, and you got uh, room for seating in there. Got two seats in there, and then just a little bit more space for, like, cargo and whatever. Uh, you can open up these side hatches. It's like a double door. Um, and so you can have, like, your stormtroopers running out. The only issue is that... It is actually too low for them to stand up unless you do this, which just looks dumb. But it's whatever. And then it's the same on the other side again. And then the cockpit um, opens up like with two ways. You got the, the control panel actually swings open with the front part. And so what you can do is take your trooper, stick him in there. Close it up and then you got the control panel is like right up to him pretty comfortably. Close that. And then he's just sitting in there and then you can see through the window too, which is a nice touch. Oh, you got stud shooters on the sides, obviously. And grief cargo just fell on the floor, oh well. But yeah, uh, stud shooters on both sides. I'm probably never going to see that again, but whatever. <laughs> so you can uh, go around here, and there is a rotating cannon. I like that it actually has a stopper, because most um, turrets don't have that. Uh, stud shooters, again, I'm not even going to fire them. But uh, you can open uh, the back up, and there's a chair in there. And uh, I like that this actually rotates with the uh, cannon, just like the real thing would. And then I like how it has like the clear piece back there, so it looks like they're like geared together, I guess, but not directly connected, even though that's obviously exactly what's going on is they're just directly connected by one piece. But you can stick your trooper in here. I don't like that there's no way to access it from the top, but uh, they made it pretty easy from back here. You can close that, and then as you turn the cannon, the trooper actually turns too, just like the real thing, which I think is a really nice detail. Oh, you got the repulsor engines on the back, and you got the um, slider pieces on the bottom to make it look like it's levitating. And uh, There's no real space for the mortar trooper, which kind of sucks, unless you like took off his backpack, but you know what, that's okay. Uh, so, um, I think that's gonna do it for this set. Uh, it's definitely a really good army builder. It's no battle pack for sure, but, uh, for modern standards, it comes with a pretty decent amount of stormtroopers. So, um, if you're into army building, especially Imperial stuff and Mandalorian, uh, I highly recommend picking it up. The price for piece ratio is really, really good too. All the sets this wave have pretty good price for piece ratios which is very unusual for licensed sets, especially Star Wars sets, but I ain't complaining. Uh, so yeah, um, overall I'd say I'd give this set probably a 9. It's definitely one of the best sets of the wave, and I highly recommend picking it up if you're a Mandalorian fan. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I think that's going to do it, and I will talk to you all later.